we're back in the garage with a Ford Explorer. We got a couple different things going on with this vehicle, but they're all going to be resolved with one part. And I'm going to show you guys how I basically took what was originally going to be a several hour job and a lot of headache and a lot of hassle. And I wasn't really looking forward to it into making it into a much simpler, easy job for just about the same part costs. So it's a 2006 Explorer four wheel drive. And the problem that we had was the squeaking noise coming from this left rear wheel here. Initially, I thought maybe a rock or a piece of debris had been lodged between the brake rotor and the brake caliper. But after I took it apart, that turned out to not be the case and I found something else. In order to show you what happened here, I'm gonna to have to raise the vehicle up. I'm gonna to have to take this left rear wheel off and we're gonna to have to get down into the brake components and I'll show you what happened. By the way, before I raise this vehicle up, I wanna let you all know that this is an Atlas Quick Bay 7,000 pound lift. Lots of people ask in the comments whenever I show this lift in the video, what kind of lift is it? Atlas Quick Bay, 7,000 pounds. They still make them today. Great lift if you're a do-it-yourselfer in the garage. This is an absolute must-have. I love it. It's the best two grand back in the day that I spent on all the equipment here in my garage. I absolutely love it. I'm not sponsored by them in any way, shape, or form, though I wish I was. That would be really cool. But anyways, now you know what kind of lift it is. And as you can see, it picks this Explorer up with no problem whatsoever. Now, one of the first things you're gonna notice is it's a little bit rusty. You look underneath the truck, you can see rust. Unfortunately, being in the St. Louis area, they put a lot of salt down on the roads in the winter. And even on my excursion here that I've tried to take really good care of, you can see that I've got rust along the rocker panels a little bit further back there on the back of the truck. As you can see, we, we got rust there. But that's just one of the things about living in the St. Louis area. You're gonna have to deal with rust. There's no choice. You can clean the vehicles up the best that you can, but the matter of the fact is, the salt and debris and everything's gonna get places where you can't when you're cleaning it up. And that's what has caused our problem here with this Explorer is we've got some rusted pieces here that have caused this noise. Now, in order to get to this, we're gonna have to take the brake rotor off as well. To get the brake rotor off, we need to remove this caliper. So we're gonna get a 10 millimeter uh, socket here on my cordless uh, ratchet wrench. And we're gonna take this brake caliper off and then take the brake rotor off. Now, in most cases, you're gonna to have to hit the rotor with a hammer here to get it to come loose. But in this case, it popped right off because I've already had it off before. Now, as you can see, we have even more rust back here. But you're gonna notice that there's some pieces missing. Inside, we should have brake shoes and brake hardware. The reason why this is not in there is because I took it out. And the reason I took it out is because the hardware had come loose and was rubbing against this hub here where these uh, studs go to the wheel you can see some fresh marks on here where it was rubbing previously now i had to put the wheel back on so i could back it out of my garage while i waited for parts to arrive but what happens is with these rear brakes you have these little retainers they almost look like nails that hold the brake hardware in for the parking brake and as you can see here see this big hole here this little shield has rusted through and therefore the little retainer, the little nail piece pulled through and all the brake components fell apart on the inside. This is how the little hole should look for the retainer. So that's how it should look. 
And this is how the rusted out one looks. So in order to fix this, we have to replace this plate here. It's a whole round piece that goes around this, this hub here in the spindle. It's bolted to the spindle here. And in order to get this plate off, I have to take this hub out. But the hub is attached to the wheel bearing, so I gotta take the axle nut out. Then I gotta take the whole spindle off. I gotta press the old bearing out, press a new bearing in, put all the brake hardware back together, and by the time it was all said and done, this was going to be a few hour job for me. So I looked around for other options and I found out that I could get this whole assembly for about twice the price of just one wheel bearing. It's about $150 for this whole spindle here. Let me show you the new part. Here is the new part. It's a whole spindle assembly complete with a new shield like you see right here. This is our new shield for the parking brake components and as you can see as an added bonus it also comes with brand new brake hardware so if any brake hardware was damaged you don't have to worry about it it's all nice and brand new on this part here's the little retainers see that little nail that kind of sticks through there that then is it is hooked in this little clip here and that holds your brake shoes in place so it comes with a new shield all new brake hardware, it's already adjusted. It comes with a brand new wheel bearing. We don't have to press the old wheel bearing out and press a new one in. All these bushings here on the spindle are new. Basically everything is brand new here. And they even give you a new axle nut as well. And like I said, this was only about $150. So in my opinion, much worth a little bit extra money that you'll spend on parts to save yourself a ton of time and hassle and headache messing with the brake shoes and pressing the bearing in and out and all the other stuff that goes with it. So let's see how this goes. First things first, we're gonna get everything soaking in PB Blaster. We wanna make this as easy as it possibly can be for all the retainers, bolts, nuts, studs, and everything else that we are gonna have to reuse. We're gonna try to preserve these the best that we can so we're going to try to make this job as easy as possible by getting everything soaking in PB Blaster. Now we're going to need to hammer the axle shaft back in a little bit. And because we get a new axle shaft nut, what I'm going to do is just start the axle shaft nut a little bit here on the axle shaft. That way, when I strike it with a hammer, we hit the nut and not the threads. We don't damage the threads. If nothing else, we just damage this nut that we're going to replace. That way, we won't have any problem putting the new nut back on the existing axle shaft. Now let me say this, it is a good idea to take some lug nuts and put them on the threads of your wheel studs here if you are going to be reusing this hub here. The reason why I didn't is because as you can see, we have brand new lug studs here. So instead of taking a chance of tearing up the lug nut if I accidentally hit it with the hammer, I decided to leave them off because we have new studs. But if you do have to reuse these studs, put a lug nut on there to protect the threads from being hit by the hammer. As you can see, the axle shaft has moved out a little bit here. This tone ring here on the axle shaft is normally directly beneath this wheel speed sensor. So we have moved it back a little bit, but the problem is we can only hammer it in so far because this axle shaft has probably compressed completely at the joints. So now we have to take the rest of the spindle here loose from the frame of the vehicle, and then we can hammer the axle shaft out the rest of the way. As always, keep it soaking. PB Blaster is your friend. Next, using an eight millimeter socket, we're gonna take out the bolt that holds the wheel speed sensor in place. 
probably going to have to wiggle this back and forth to get it to come loose and then eventually it'll come out just like that. The nice thing about these wheel speed sensors is you're much less likely to break them. Unlike the type that have the sensor portion of the sensor assembly inserted into the spindle, which then gets rusted in there and seized in there, and you almost can't get them out at all. You just got to break them off and put a new one on. This one just bolts right to the side, and then it comes right out just like so. Next, we're going to remove the parking brake cable and the two arms that are attached to it. It just slides out just like so. We're going to take this top spindle nut and bolt off right here. So I have a 24 millimeter socket on my impact here and a 24 millimeter wrench. We'll go ahead and rip this off. Now, as you can see, we have a little bit more play this way. So we're gonna try to hammer the axle shaft out the rest of the way and get it free from the hub here. There she goes, now she's free. Have I mentioned that my neighbors here are just the absolute best? I mean, it doesn't get much better than this, folks. I've been doing this kind of work in my garage here now for about three years, and nobody has said anything. Maybe it's because I help them out with stuff, you know, but to be in a neighborhood like this and be able to do this kind of work for three years and not a single complaint, best neighbors ever. So if anybody in my neighborhood is watching this, thank you very much. Love you guys. Now you wanna be careful not to damage any of these little nubs on the tone ring here because even if one of these gets bent, it's gonna throw the ABS wheel speed sensor reading off and set an ABS light. So make sure that you don't damage these. Now on the back side of the spindle, you can see that we've got three more 21 millimeter bolts that have to come out in order to separate this whole spindle assembly from this lower control arm. And we're just gonna get our impact out Hammer away and get these last three out. Here's the new one and the old one. As you can see, pretty much everything is on there. We'll have to transfer these old brake pad shims onto our new spindle here, but everything's complete. Transfer this old rubber bushing here. And again, before going back together, we're going to give everything a nice coating of PB Blaster just to try to make reassembly as easy as possible. Every little bit helps. transfer these brake pad slide shims here from the old spindle to the new one. Put 
the parking brake levers back in. There we are, just like that. Put the wheel speed sensor back in. Take the rotor, just inspect it and make sure it wasn't damaged by any of those loose pieces in there. Looks like it's okay. Slides right over with slight resistance from the brake shoes behind it, so that's a good sign that the parking brake is adjusted correctly. Put the brake caliper back on. I'm gonna take the new axle shaft nut here. There's a torque spec for this, but I'm not gonna torque it until I get the vehicle back down on the ground. The reason being is the tire sitting on the concrete will keep it from rotating while I torque it to spec. We got the axle nut all the way down, and as you can see, that has pulled the tone ring for the speed sensor here uh, right into position, right where it needs to be perfectly. You'll want to see a little air gap there like we do, but that's perfectly fine. So once we get this lowered down and get the wheel on the garage floor, then we can torque that to spec. We're gonna torque the axle nut to 180 pound-feet of torque. There we go. A little bit tight there. Socket is a little bit oversized, but it works. And we're going to torque the lug nuts to 100 pound feet of torque. There we go. Put the aftermarket wheel cover back on here. There is one other thing you may want to consider doing, and that's having an alignment done. Because we've disassembled and reassembled parts that have to do with the rear alignment, you may want to have an alignment done if the vehicle isn't driving right or if you notice abnormal tire wear. In most cases, you should be okay, but if you're particular about your vehicle and you want it to be perfectly straight when driving down the road, you may want to get that done. We're going to take it for a quick drive. Make sure no ABS codes set and no warning lights are on. ABS codes usually set very quickly, so if you don't have any warning lights or any codes, once you hit 20 miles an hour or so, like you've seen here in this little short clip, you are most likely okay. So we probably saved about two or three hours of labor, depending on how much time we would have spent fighting the wheel bearings and uh, other rusted bolts or hardware, perhaps. I think this was the right way to do it. Now he doesn't have to worry about anything on the left rear for quite some time. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys next time with a seatbelt chime that everyone loves.